Hello folks, so some time ago I did a video on used cars under five grand and particularly family cars and it's been one of if not my most popular video that I've ever done. Not saying much is it, the bar's pretty low on that. So um, I thought I'd do a part two and do a little follow up of it. I think I was on eBay for that one. So I'm gonna look at Auto Trader on this one. You do sometimes see differences between the two and the good thing with um, Auto Trader is you can filter out the, the Cat S, Cat N cars. So in this one, I'm looking at none of them are category cars. So none of them have been previous write-offs. They're all under 90,000 miles and they're all under five grand. Keep watching. Guys, just a quick reminder to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already done so. And also check in the video description and pinned as the first comment, there's a link to V car checks. Use that link and it helps support the channel. But more importantly, I think it's one of the best car history check services currently online. Very, very cheap. I think it starts at about three quid, but I would probably go for one of the slightly more expensive options because you get a better quality report on it. With the, the top level of report, you can get absolutely everything on that car. You can see the mileage that was recorded on it each year. Uh, you can see pictures of it if it's been involved in an accident previously, if they're available. You get the accident pictures, so you, you'll see the car all stoved in and you can see the damage before it happens. So if you are looking at a category car that's been a previous write-off, you, know, you can go and see the images of the damage before and decide if that's still something you want to get yourself into. There's so much information. You can see if it's ever been used as a taxi. Absolutely tons and tons of information. I don't think there's anything missing from that that you may actually want to see. So strongly recommend it. As always, I only recommend things I believe in, not because they're going to generate income or the most amount of income. With this, I get a couple of quid if you go and use it. Um, in fact, I think it's less than that. It's a small amount of money, but obviously using my link helps support the channel. So if you are looking at used cars and you obviously you want to do a history check, I'd appreciate it if you use that one. Click my link and it helps support the channel. Thanks. Okay, so let's get started. These are not always going to be the absolute prime examples of these cars, folks. These are what I can find online today at the time of recording this video. And um, they, you know, there may be better alternatives on the market lower price whatever it may be i'm literally just looking on auto trader and it's what's available on there today as i record this video i'm just picking out things that i feel like a good value for money and a good idea as a family car for various reasons by the way i will mention as well this is cars under five grand i think the cheapest one on here is about two right so this one's a 2010 toyota rav4 and it's the 2.2 d4d and that's the xtr four-wheel drive so I don't know if you've seen my recent videos on the reliability survey from what car on new cars, but Lexus and Toyota are two of the top three brands. Obviously, Lexus and Toyota are one in the same. So that's really good. By the way, a bit controversial, those videos. I don't know why. Some people seem to think it's my opinion and not the opinion of 16,000 people that have responded. I'll put a link to the video up there, so um, or a link to the playlist up there. So if you want to check those out, please do. Anyway, Toyota are known for fantastic reliability. Just keep them well maintained and looked after and they'll go on for, for an age. They're possibly not the most exciting cars at all times and they might not be the best cars to drive. Um, the, the autos, for example, have a CVT gearbox quite often, which is not amazing, but reliability is their thing and they're just tough you know hard wearing cars really really decent cars so the rav4 obviously there's a new model out nowadays that looks a bit like a transformer but this is still quite a good looking car not massively dissimilar to a cash kai but perhaps a, a little bit chunkier a tiny bit more masculine maybe a bit like me chunkier and more masculine so interior is fairly typical Toyota, like not very exciting at all, but very hard wearing plastics and everything. And yeah, it's not gonna go wrong. You're not gonna get bits falling off that. So there we go, decent boot space in it. Fantastic for loading in all your gear and the kids and maybe a push chair and all that sort of stuff. You're gonna have no problems at all with that boot. And look at the way the boot opens, like a car door, which is quite cool. Yeah, so I like a RAV4, 87,000 miles that one. And full service history, 
Let's have a look here. Beautifully well maintained with one year's MOT, full service history records, comes with full heated electric black leather, interior climate control, air con, radio CD, USB connection, multifunction steering wheel, privacy tints, blah, 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 HPI clear. So on the face of it, that looks like a good one, doesn't it? Um, performance 10.2 to 60, which is perfectly adequate in a car like that. 210 quid a year road tax, claimed combined MPG of 48.7. Yeah, it's not a bad shout at all, that one. So next we go on to a 2009 Kia Seed. So if you're in the market for like a Focus or an Astra or that kind of car, the standard sort of traditional family hatchback, think about Kia because they make some brilliant cars. They're really reliable. And um, I think the build quality is better than on maybe Vauxhalls and Fords. I mean, shoot me down if I'm wrong. But they're, they're, they're decent cars, the Kias. So let's have a look at this one. So it looks reasonably tidy. Bear in mind, this car's two and a half grand. It looks reasonably tidy. There's a little bit of damage there. Oh, no, actually, that's a reflection. So it looks okay. Um... This is the best bit though, one former keeper since 2013, so since 2013, so it's had more keepers than that, but it's had the same owner since 2013, and check this out, service stamps at 16, 34, 39, 45, 50, 54, 59, 66, last serviced at 70,000, it's done 73, MOT until June of next year. New rear and front brake discs and pads just fitted. Three month warranty, blah, blah, blah. Warranted mileage. So that is fantastic. That's what you want in a used car. It's had a service every year, I would assume. Really, really regular servicing. That's massively important. So pro probably whoever's been servicing that, that previous keeper, has done it once a year rather than when it's done a certain mileage or something. And getting used to every time the car goes in for an MOT, having a service done. Even if you have the basics, you know, oil and filters, that's a very, very good thing to be doing. Um, and look, nine service stamps, one former keeper in all those years, and it's just had new rear and front brake discs and pads. That looks like a very, very good buy for two and a half grand. So if you search around enough, there are bargains to be had. I know people go on at the moment about used, used car prices going through the roof, and yes, they have. In a lot of cases but that's that's good value at two and a half grand it really is right this one is a dacia sandero <gasps> really i'm i'm suggesting a dacia well they've just come really high in that reliability su survey obviously that's for cars up to five years old but they're very basic cars aren't they and because they share most of their parts with various other sort of French atrocities. Probably going to be fairly easy to source second-hand parts for them and stuff, and they've sold loads of them. So it's going to be a cheap car to fix for most things you would think. And, um, yeah, it's the newest car here by a long stretch, 2016 for five grand, done 48,000 miles. It's not exciting. It's a Dacia Sandero, and I don't know bags about them reliability-wise other than what I've seen in various online surveys that all say they're massively reliable. Um, whether that car will still be reliable when it gets to 10 years old, who knows? But there we go. Performance-wise, is not going to be fantastic. 11.8 seconds to 60. Running cost, zero road tax, 80 MPG. So really, what's, what's the insurance group? Uh, insurance group 10 so it's a really really low insurance group for that size of car as well but it's a roomy car it's very practical it's got a decent sized boot i don't know maybe it makes sense to you so you should probably give it some thought and do a bit more research on them find out if they do have common fault get it properly checked over by a mechanic but as you can see like you know that looks like it's straight out of a renault from about 2003 doesn't it and it probably is and that's why they're cheap cars equipment so you know maybe it's okay i think those reliability surveys have showed us that me especially i've got preconceptions about a lot of different cars and brands and everything else would i buy one no chance right toyota revensis 2011 so big estate car seventy nine thousand miles 1.8 petrol uh this one's 4995 
and let's have a look at performance 0 to 60 in 9.7 210 quid a year road tax 42.8 combined mpg the reason this one's on here really is again if you're looking at if you want an estate car which i still think is a brilliant choice for a family car estate cars are often overlooked everyone knows about mondeos everyone knows about octavias and all those kind of things but look at toyotas as well because you have got that reliability with a toyota uh, they, you know, they are well famed for their reliability and the fact they go on forever. You'll see loads of events around as uh, taxis and that tells its own story. Get a history check because of that, because there are a lot of these around that have done like 200 odd thousand miles and you don't want this to be one of them and somebody's cleverly turned the clock back on it. So make sure you do a proper history check like that one I mentioned before that's pinned in the comments because, um, you know, You'd be mad not to. You really would be mad not to. But that looks like a very tidy car. Huge boot in it. It's got the rubber floor mat as well, which is cool. Nice and practical. But you look at that boot. I mean, you could get a buggy in there. You could get a couple of scooters and whatnot. Probably your shopping as well. So it's great. And for a family holiday as well, especially when we're staycationing, what more could you want? It's ULES compliant as well, this one, which is really good. By the way, as we go on from here, I'll mention the ULES compliance on the, uh, each of the cars. The Kia we looked at, I don't think is ULES compliant, and I don't think the RAV4 is either, but the Dacia is, and this one is. Right, 2011 Nissan Qashqai. So this is a lower price, as you can see. It's a bit cheaper than they normally are, and most of the cars I saw with similar spec and mileage and stuff were floating more around the four and a half grand mark. This one's four, but it's that beige goldy color and that's probably why, right? It's not the most attractive car. If you want to get a good car and save yourself money on it, sometimes look at the most hideous color and you'll find one, especially with something like a Qashqai where there are loads of them on the used car market. You could save yourself quite a decent amount of money if you go around in, in a, a beige one and maybe it doesn't bother you. You know, maybe you just want the best car and you haven't got a ton of money. Uh, one other thing I'd say with used cars generally, I've mentioned this on one of my other videos, but I'll probably mention it a bit more often, is if you've got a budget of four grand to buy a car and that's literally all you've got, and if it was 4,500, you wouldn't be able to buy it, you know, that's all you've got, buy one for three and a half and stick your 500 quid away for if and when something goes wrong with it. Because if you're looking at used cars under five grand, you will at some point get a bill on it that's going to be two, three, four, five hundred quid, whatever it may be, and have that money tucked away. So instead of always looking at your top budget, maybe just step it back slightly and hold on to the rest of that money. If I'd have done that a couple of times as a younger bloke, I would have um, been in a much better place financially at times. Just a bit of food for thought. Okay, so this one's 1 1.6 Vizier two-wheel drive, ULES compliant, petrol, 0 to 60 and 11.9, 170 quid a year road tax, 45.6 MPG. So look, I mean that colour is not the best, is it, shall we say? But it looks very, very tidy. I mean, the bodywork looks fantastic on it. Um, Dare I say that somebody that's ordered the car in that colour may have been of a certain age and may have been the sort of person that really looks after their car. Um, this looks like it's had a had a wash on a Sunday, doesn't it? Decent sized boot on a cash car. Obviously, they kind of started off the whole crossover craze. It's got a steering wheel cover on, so I'd want to have a look under that to see if that steering wheel is completely knackered. The, um, the seat looks plenty baggy as well. That looks like that's had some use. So I definitely want to get the mileage checked on this because there are two signs that it's done high mileage. And also have a look at stuff like wear on the gear knob and, and that kind of thing. Um, fairly uninspiring interior, but it's what you expect, isn't it? Nothing out of the ordinary. So it says it's done 72,000 miles, but I would just want to get that checked because of the steering wheel cover and that baggy seat. Uh, it might just add a fat bloke like me driving it that's worn the seat out who had particularly sweaty palms or something you never know guys just a super quick reminder to give the video a quick thumbs up and if you haven't already done so please subscribe to the channel please thanks so here you go four grand cash card right 2007 vw touran it's the 1.4 tsi petrol 
3,700 quid. Let's have a looky at this. It's got some stickers on the back. So you want to get those off and make sure that the paint's not faded around them and get that dealt with. And very few photos on this one, unfortunately. So you would have to give it a good check over 90,000 miles. Uh, this is a five seater rather than a seven seater. But it's got a decent sized boot, although they haven't taken a picture of it, which is really helpful, isn't it? A nice economical prestige petrol, spacey five seater, finishing dark metallic grey, sporty refined black interior. 275 quid a year road tax and 38.2 mpg. Just probably the least frugal of the cars we've seen so far. 9.8 seconds to 60. Uh, the reason, really, I've put this one on here, we've we've got Touran, as I've mentioned several times, and ours is a 2018 model, and it looks pretty much exactly the same as this, only ours is the seven-seat version. So my point is, this model's been around for donkey's years. They've sold a cartload of these cars. Parts are really easy to come by, and they are just utilitarian, practical cars that you can throw a load of stuff in you've got three proper seats in the back so you could get three child seats in there or two child seats and an adult and they just make really good practical family cars so i thought it'd be remiss of me not to mention it 2011 ford grand c max so the great thing about the c max obviously it's a slightly strange looking car at the back end but it's got slidey doors at the back so if you've got kids coming in and out and uh, you need to get your kids in and out of car seats in tight car parks, we've all been there, haven't we? Uh, a slidey door is the best invention ever in that circumstance because it makes the impossible possible. And you've still got a decent sized boot on it as well. And second row or the third row even. So you've got the two little seats that pop up in the back. So you can carry seven in there. Otherwise you've got a massive boot. So yeah, brilliant car, sort of best of both worlds. You've got sort of the MPV size, albeit in sort of hatchback guys. Uh, 210 quid tax, combined MPG 48.7, and uh, 0-60 and 10.5. I mean, for five grand, if you've got a couple of kids, absolutely brilliant. This one's the automatic. And um, I have heard tale of issues with that power shift gearbox. I actually really like the power shift gearbox to use and drive. It, it feels good to me. But um, they do go wrong. So make sure you get that checked over. And it would be one where I suggest you get a gearbox service done on it if it hasn't had one. Uh, this one doesn't mention Ulez. So um, it's a 2011 diesel. We've got to assume it's not Ulez compliant so that might be something that gives you cause for concern and there's not a great deal of mention about service history at all so you would want to see service history on that because that's a good mileage on that age of car especially for this kind of car so you would need to double check that service history if it hasn't got any walk away from it right 2014 Vauxhall Safira it's a 1.8 VVTi 16 valve petrol this one's in exclusive trim now, Zafiras have had loads of recalls, so the first thing you need to do is make sure that car's had all its recalls, and you can do that. You can check with Vauxhall, and I think there are a couple of websites you can go on and check if the car needs any recalls. Um, again, on some of those history checker websites, like the one I've got the link for, that will tell you that kind of thing as well. Yeah, just big, practical, seven-seat car. Uh, I know a couple of these from sort of friends at the school have got them that have gone on through, through years of abuse and decent mileage on them. And yeah, no no issues with either of those. I've also read some horror stories of Sophia's that are constantly going wrong. So once again, get it properly, properly checked. And with all these kind of cars, service history is absolutely key. You want to make sure that thing's been properly serviced. Once again on this one, there's no mention of it. It is ULES compliant, which is good. Yeah, uh, for me, my sort of history of Vauxhalls has been lots of electrical issues that are not actually big deals. It's like a sensor's gone because they've got loads of sensors in them and you literally get the sensor changed and it costs you 100 quid or something and then on you go again. And so they're just like niggly things. All those little niggles can be frustrating and uh, obviously cost you money. But if you're a lucky one, then, you know, as I say, get the thing properly checked, do your history checks on it, 
and um, maybe it's a, an option for you. Right, so Ford Focus, we had to have a focus on it because when you think family car, you think Ford Focus, don't you? What do we know about the Focus? It's the choice of, I don't know, how many hundreds of thousands of people in the UK has been for years. They're just decent cars, and when they go wrong, they don't cost very much to fix, do they? Uh, the 1.6 petrol is probably the one to go for. Um, I do know of a few issues with the diesels that you don't tend to get on the petrols, and a lot of family cars, most of the time, you're doing sort of town journeys anyway, and the petrol probably appreciates that a bit more than, than a lot of diesels would. Uh, 10.9 seconds to 60, 155 quid a year road tax, 47.9 MPG. I guess the worst thing you could say about the Focus is that they're not very exciting, but I mean, that's a nice looking car for five grand, isn't it? I do like this generation of Focus, I think it's a good looking car, and the interior is quite nice as well. You know, you could do a lot worse for five grand. You can get them a bit cheaper than that, by the way. But I just thought this one was a particularly nice looking one, which is why I, I chose it for this video. HPI clear, last M MOT's got no advisories, come with pre-sale service, warranty, blah, blah, blah. Again, no mention of service history. So you need to check that it's been serviced. If it hasn't been serviced regularly and hasn't been serviced in recent times, don't have it. Bluetooth, petrol, ULEZ free. 2006 Honda FRV. So these things are, are often overlooked because people don't really know what they are and just think they're maybe slightly odd looking in times. I've always liked these. I think it's a brilliant idea. So this is a six seat car. Yes, two rows, six seats. So they've actually taken a picture of that in the car wash. There's the frontlets. You've got the, the gear selector up there on the dash. And then you've got your three proper seats in the front and three proper seats in the back. So massively practical cars. A lot of them have had quite a hard life because people buy them because they're practical. You see it's got a little hole in the um, in the light there, so that needs to be dealt with. The wheel trims look absolutely awful, so you probably want to deal with them. And I think there's a bit of a, a wavy wavy door panel there. Yeah, it's had a little bit of a there's a little bit of bodywork damage on it. But it's a practical two grand car. The pictures are awful, to be fair, so you can't make it out too well. That door card looks like there's something going on there as well. So um, it looks like it's a bit of a doer upper, doesn't it? But two grand, if you've got if you've got more than the two point four children, it might might make sense for you. So I'm I'm putting these things out here to um, you know give you some food for thought and and things to have a look at that you possibly hadn't considered before. Obviously, this is a two grand, bit of a beta, but it's two grand. You could look for a nicer one in better condition. Uh, 12.3 seconds to 60. Uh, 275 quid road tax, 37.7 MPG. So I did find this nice 3 Series Touring, which looked to be quite good and at a great price. But I've just read it's got a blooming engine issue, so I'm not going to go through that one. But do have a look at a 3 Series Touring. And in fact, even a five series touring for five grand, you can get one. You might have to go for a slightly higher mileage. But if you get a higher mileage, one that's got fantastic service history, it could be a good good car for you, particularly the petrols. I like I like the petrol engines and um, I think there are some bargains out there to be had. But service history is massively important. So make sure it's got it and make sure it's had the right services done maybe not just the oil and filter but it's had everything else done when it should like timing belts and or chains and and all those kind of things so um there we go hope you enjoyed that video guys as always give the video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so do lots of content like this on this channel there's lots of it in the back catalog at the time of filming this i think i've got about 90 videos so um please go and check those out and please tell your friends I'm on Twitter at notaguru3 and Facebook at definitely not a guru. So please follow me on those as well. Thanks for watching. See you next time.